Hi everyone. In this video, you will learn about points, lines, and planes. You'll learn the basic definitions, how to draw them, and also how to write them. Now as you begin your study of geometry, you will learn very quickly that there are a lot of terms that you'll need to know. And these terms are fundamental for our study of geometry. They're going to carry us through the class, and they're going to be used to do other things as well. So as we begin, we will begin with a lot of terms, and make sure you know these terms very well. Okay, These, like I said, are fundamental and foundational for our study in geometry. So as we begin, we're going to look specifically at points, lines, and planes. And here, we call them the undefined terms, meaning we don't really have a set definition for them. Okay, we can describe them, we can explain what they're like, but there's no real way that we have to give a definition of these things. So we call them our undefined terms. Okay, so looking at each one of these, um, they are used in the definitions of other terms. So it's important to understand, you know, what they're like and, um, you know, learn how to describe them. But as far as the definitions go, we don't have those. So let's look at a point. I think most people understand the concept of a point, but we're going to get a few specific uh, details about points that you may not necessarily know. Okay, first off, I think we know that a point is just like a dot. Okay, so we see on the right we have uh, point A and point B. Okay, now describing a point, it technically has no size. So on the screen, and when you draw this on a piece of paper or when you see it represented, yes, there is a physical size to it. But technically, by our, our description of a point, it has no size. Okay, it's represented by a dot, as we said. And an example of this might be on your computer screen or television screen. Okay, we have what's called pixels, which are each point on the screen. Okay, and depending on the size of the screen, there may be more or less pixels. And the more pixels there are, that means there's more points and you have better quality of video on the computer or television. Okay, when we name these, we name them with capital letters. So we see here we have point A as well as point B. Okay, we name them or label them with capital letters. Now looking at the next undefined term, and that's the word line. I think most of us know what a line is and what it looks like, but a few more um, descriptions of our term line. Okay, we see here there are two lines represented at the bottom of the screen. Okay, so we can describe them as uh, they extend in two directions without ending. Okay, they keep going forever and ever. Okay, it has no thickness, just like a point has no size, a line technically has no thickness. So yes, when we draw them on the screen or draw them on a sheet of paper, there is thickness to it because of the thickness of our writing tool. But technically speaking, in our study of geometry, a line will have no thickness. And then as far as labeling them or naming them, they're referred to by a single lowercase letter, such as line H here on the left side. Or if we know two points, like on the right line, we see points A and B. If we know two points, we can write it as AB with a little line symbol above it, or BA with a line symbol above it. The order of the letters does not matter as long as we have that line symbol above. Okay, and I would like to point out that first part of our description where it extends in two directions uh, without ending. This is critical uh, because there's another term that we'll learn later called a line segment that does end, and it does have a beginning and end point. So there is a difference between a line and a line segment. So understanding that first part is going to be um, crucial for our later discussion with line segments. And then for a line, we need to know two points in order to know where the line is going. So for example, Here's a point, and if we were to draw a line through this point, okay, the line could go really anywhere, right? It could go this way, it could go this way. But to know which direction it's going to be going specifically, we need a second point. 
So if we have a second point over here, okay, then we know exactly where the line is going. It's going to go right through this two points, just like that. Okay, so it is important to realize that we need two points to know where the line is going. And now along the same lines, no pun intended, uh, if we had two points right here, okay, if we have two points, there's only one line that can go through those two points. Okay, so for any two points, there's only one line that can go through them. So a little side note right there as well. And then our third undefined term is what we call a plane. Now this is not like an air plane. However, there is a similarity in, in our terms. But the word plane in geometry, what that means is, is something like this. It's, it's a surface. Okay, so we see... Here on the right, there's a surface. Uh, it could be something like a table, uh, like a table surface. You know, it could be like a wall, a ceiling, a floor. Uh, anything that is a flat surface would be considered a plane. Okay, so we see here there's two planes, and we have some examples of them. And technically, a plane extends without ending. Okay, just like a line kept going forever and ever and ever without ending, a plane will technically, based off our description, will extend without ending. So if you look at a table, for example, a table will come to an end. Okay, a wall will come to an end, a floor will come to an end, a ceiling will come to an end. So if you want to look at the nuance of the term, all of those examples would not be a true description or true example of a plane because a plane would have to go on forever and ever and ever without ending. Okay, so there's nothing really in in reality that uh, we see that keeps going forever like that. So for most intents and purposes, you know, a table or a wall or some sort of surface would be considered a plane, but in geometry a little nuance or technicality is that the plane would have to keep going forever without ending. And now also a plane has no thickness just like a point had no size just like a line had no thickness as well a plane technically has no thickness. In addition a plane also would have no edges because if a plane keeps going forever and ever and ever without ending, then if that's the case, there's never going to be a point where it stops where it's going to have an edge. So for example, like a table, a table would have edges, and that's why it's not technically a plane, uh, but something that keeps going forever would not have any edges. Now as far as naming a plane, there are two ways that we can name a plane. Okay, and that's based off the two pictures that we see here on the right side. So the first way is we look at the top plane. We can use three points on the plane to name the plane. So we see here points D, E, and F. Well, we can use those three points and name this as plane D, E, F. Again, the order does not matter. We can name this plane D, E, F, or E, D, F, or F, E, D. The order does not make a difference. And the other way is with the bottom plane, and that's with just simply a capital letter. Okay, just like a point, use a capital letter. Same thing with a plane, we can use a capital letter. So that'd be called plane H. Okay, with a plane, just like a line needed two points to know which way the line was going, a plane needs three points to know which direction it is going. So kind of a similar concept to the line example. Okay, now using these different terms. There are a couple theorems or facts to know. And the first one here says through a line and a point not on the line, there's exactly one plane. So the question is, well, what does this even mean? All right, so let's make a picture uh, describing what we have. So we have a line and then a point not on the line. Okay, well, a line has two points or needs two points to know which way it's going. So we see here there's two points on the line. And then now we have the point not on the line, which gives me a total of three points. So we have three points, which is our description of a plane. So because we need three points to make a plane, 
Therefore, we can conclude that through a line and a point not on the line, there is exactly one plane. Now, using the same type of logic for this next uh, theorem, it says if two lines intersect, then exactly one plane contains the lines. So we have two lines, they intersect. This would be the picture that we would draw to represent this. Okay, so we need two points on a line. So we see here there are two lines, two points on each line. So there's four points total, but notice that there's one point that they have shared, right? Where they intersect, where they cross, this point right here is shared. So there's only three points total, technically. And as we just stated, a plane requires three points to know which way it's going. So three points make up one plane. Therefore, this theorem is true. If two lines intersect, then exactly one plane contains the lines. Now, a few other terms to know. Uh, next one is what we call space. Space is kind of a nebulous term, uh, but all it simply means is, is the set of all points. Okay, and just like a line needed two points and a plane needed three points, space needs at least four points to be represented. Okay, another term we have is the term collinear. Now, if we understand what English words mean and even prefixes, this word kind of falls into place because the prefix co means with. So co means with. Okay, and then uh, we see linear. There's the word line and the word linear. So this literally means points with the same line. Okay, so an example of this would be over here on the right. These two points, points A and B, are collinear because they are on the same line. Okay, whereas these two points, points A and B, would now not be collinear or non-collinear because they're not on the same line. A similar term we have is called coplanar points. So once again, co, co means with, and then planar. You see the word planar looks like plane. So this term literally means points with the same plane. So, for example, right here, these three points, D, E, and F, would be coplanar because they're all on the same plane. Whereas these three points would not be coplanar, or they'd be non-coplanar, because they're not on the same plane. Now, a few other things you need to know as we wrap up this lesson. Uh, next thing is a term, and that term is the word intersection. And this term we've actually already used previously in this lesson, because most people actually know what this means, but uh, to give an actual formal definition, the word intersection is where something meets. So it can be anything, right? It can be two roads meeting, and there's an intersection of the roads, or it can be two lines, two planes, it can be anything. So two lines intersect to form something, and you know, the question is, what do they form? Well, here we see two lines. They intersect, and they intersect at this point right there. So they're intersecting right here at this point, and that's our answer. They intersect at a point. Okay, And then two planes intersect to form what shape? Well, we see here there's two planes intersecting, and notice where they intersect. Right along here, they intersect, and planes keep going forever, so technically this intersection will keep going forever. And so what shape is this? Well, that's going to be a line. So two planes intersect to form a line. And this would be represented maybe by like a uh, wall and a floor, for example. They, there's a line where they intersect at the bottom or the top. Okay, so those are a few other things to know. And then one last thing, that's the idea of the word between. Okay, there's confusion on this sometimes, uh, but it's, it's pretty self-explanatory, I feel like, where between just simply means um, here, for example, you have A and B, and then C. C is between A and B. Okay, it's easier just to show a picture as opposed to give a definition. Oh, sometimes people are confused with is this picture versus something like this picture. There are people who uh, get this confused, where they th people say, oh, C would be between A and B. However, C is not between A and B, because to be between, they technically need to be in the same line. 
Okay, so make sure you understand the difference between the word between and the word, or I guess the idea of not between. And that concludes our lesson for today, and we will see you next time.